Boo! Were you frightened this time? Sorry, I gotta keep these intros fresh somehow. Anyway, how's it going guys? It's Nate here, and Skyrim is a towering game that feels impossible to not be completely captivated by. Even when you're not dragon hunting or civil war winning, there is a tremendous number of activities to keep you busy and lost in this world that is the Elder Scrolls V. But it's been almost seven years now, and many of us may finally be getting that feeling that we've done it all. Well, rest assured, even after all these years, there may still be a few things in this frozen land that you've yet to try. So today we'll be exploring just some of them, as we take a look at yet another 10 Oops Wrong series, 5 more things you probably didn't know you could do in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Part 12! Starting off, the quest, A Chance Arrangement, serves as the player's introduction and unknowing initiation to Riften's Thieves Guild. In it, you'll be approached by an obvious snake oil salesman in the town's marketplace named Brynjolf, who seems to be trying to sell something he calls Falmer Blood Elixir, but that's neither here nor there. Brynjolf will inform the player that he can make you quite a bit of coin if you help him with what he calls an errand. He'll request that you steal a ring from the city's jewelry vendor, an Argonian named Medesi, and plant it on a Dark Elf shopkeeper known as Brand Shea. According to Brynjolf, the man who's paying him wants Shea out of business, and planting that ring on him will lead to his arrest. If you agree to take part in this scheme, which you will have to if you ever want to join the Thieves' Guild, Brynjolf will quickly cause a distraction by summoning everyone nearby to listen to some speech about his elixir and Medesi will leave his jewelry stall unattended to listen. This will give you the opportunity to steal the ring and sneak up on the distracted Branche and place it in his inventory. Shortly after you've done so, Brynjolf will conclude his speech and compliment you on a job well done, as well as give you your payment and offer you a chance to develop deeper ties with the guild. Branche will also be approached by a guard and arrested on these obviously fake charges here on the spot spending the remainder of the game in Riften's dungeon. While you did succeed, for many players this might not sit right. The only way to join the Thieves Guild is to get an innocent man's ruined? Come on! Besides, Brand is a vendor who the Dragonborn can trade with and buy from. Him going to jail is just one less merchant in the game. Well, there's actually a way to complete this quest and join with the Thieves, but make sure Brand Shea remains a free man. You see, once you've stolen Medesi's ring, rather than plant it on the unsuspecting Dunmer, simply drop it. That's right, just drop it on the ground and remove the item from your inventory. After doing so, approach Brynjolf and a new dialogue option will become available that allows you to tell him that you've lost the ring. This will automatically fail the objective, but still complete the quest. Brynjolf will be surprisingly understanding of your mishap and will still invite you to join his faction. All the while, Branche will not be arrested and will stay a vendor for the rest of your playthrough. Unless otherwise murdered to death, that is. But still, it's a win-win. Lost it. Well, at least you showed signs of initiative by telling me. I guess I shouldn't be surprised with the way things are going around here. Until next we meet, lad. I guess I expected too much from you. I didn't think you'd get pinched. Can't say I'm surprised with the way things have been going around here. Next on our list, Alduin's attack on Helgen is easily among the more memorable opening scenes in gaming. Almost being decapitated to death, only to be saved by your soon-to-be arch-nemesis in the nick of time and make your escape. But did you know that it's actually possible to escape and leave Helgen early? That is, without running through a spooky, scary dungeon like the game asks you to. As Alduin begins his assault and you run up one of the town's guard towers early in the level, the dragon will break his head through a wall and breathe fire into the building, killing a nearby Stormcloak, but ironically, he only provides an easier path to safety for the dragonborn. As now you'll easily be able to jump onto a nearby home. This is also where Bethesda teaches the player how to jump in the game. However, rather than lunge atop of that house as the game wants you to, if you instead decide to jump on the ledge that hugs the tower you're on, you'll be able to follow it around the structure, and eventually jump onto Helgen's walls. And from there, simply jump off and out of the town. After that, congratulations, you are free. Now, jumping on that tower ledge is certainly easier said than done, as there will be an invisible wall that kind of interferes with it, and it'll likely take a few tries and well-placed quicksaves in order to overcome and do successfully. 
but it is definitely doable. Once outside the city, you'll be able to roam the entirety of Skyrim, though we'll have a couple of notable restrictions. Since your hands will still be bound, as doing this method will prevent Hadvar or Rayloth from cutting you free, you'll be unable to pick up items, equip items, open doors, or even fast travel making this not the most viable method of playing Skyrim. You also won't be able to enter dialogue with NPCs, as the interact button is effectively useless at this point. Nor will you be able to enter cities, and if you're like me, you're probably just gonna spend most of your time desperately fleeing from wild animals that you're completely defenseless from. Suffice to say, you're probably not gonna be doing too much questing in a condition like this. You can't accept quests anyway. Nonetheless, I still found doing this pretty entertaining, and an interesting way to kill an hour or so. For a third spot, in previous videos we discussed how dropping valuables in crowded areas can result in the local NPCs starting all-out brawls over who gets to claim your things. Well, apparently, dropping things that are, shall we say, not so valuable, leads to some different results. Dropping items that have values under 5 gold, so for example empty wine glasses or bottles, in the middle of a settlement, can actually lead to the locals calling you out and criticizing the player for littering. Take a listen. And they call me a savage. At least I don't leave my trash lying around. And there's a place for trash. And that's not it. Really, the nerve of some people leaving their trash wherever they please. What kind of filthy barbarian just throws their trash on the ground? Now, keep in mind, these verbal rebuttals won't always be heard, as the AI decides if it's going to say them rather randomly, and only certain characters have the appropriate dialogue files anyway. So it may take a few attempts. But no matter, I found this to be a hilarious world interaction for the player to trigger. Coming at number 4, during the Dark Brotherhood quest, Morning Never Comes, Astrid will send the player to meet with Muri, a woman in Markarth who's performed the Black Sacrament. Once you've arrived, she will inform the player that she wants you to take out a man named Elaine Defont. He's currently the leader of a small bandit tribe operating out of the dwarven ruins of Roldbathar. Evidently, not too long ago, Elaine and Muri were involved in a romantic relationship. Or, at least, that's what she thought it was. She was unaware of his bandit connections, and thought that he truly loved her. The truth is, that sadly just wasn't the case, and Elaine was secretly using Muri to get close to the Shattershield family, a powerful clan whom she was good friends with. One night, Elaine and his posse robbed the Shattershields blind and disappeared into the mist. Miri soon realized that she was played, but the Shattershields blamed her for the disaster and ostracized her from the community. This obviously destroyed our poor friend emotionally, so she's called upon the Dark Brotherhood to exact her revenge. Normally, once Miri's given us the contract, we'll simply head to the ruins of Elaine's hideout, take care of him, and return for a nice cash reward. However, you can actually kill Elaine Dufont before beginning this quest. He's one of the few Dark Brotherhood contracts that's both spawned in and unessential before you're sent to kill him. If Dufont is already dead by the time you speak to Muri, it will unlock some unique dialogue, in which she indeed sounds a bit disappointed. What? Elaine is... is dead. I... I I'm grateful. I... it's just this... This isn't at all how I imagined things would play out. There was Elaine, but I was considering more, and... Ah, uh, well, dead is dead, right? My thanks to you, Assassin. Here's the gold I was going to pay for the job. You earned it, after all. To me, it seems like she wanted to be the one to order his death in the first place. But nonetheless, she'll still pay you for doing her a favor anyway, and the quest will automatically be completed, allowing you to continue with the Dark Brotherhood storyline. So, if you're ever looking to complete a bit of work for the Brotherhood early, this is your opportunity. And finally, last on our list, we're returning back to the smoldering settlement that is Helgen during the Dragon Attack. At one point during Alduin's assault, he'll swoop down and pick up an Imperial soldier, only to toss him around like a ragdoll. It's... Pretty terrifying, but we can actually learn a bit more about this unfortunate man. If your character is an Imperial, you'll have access to the Voice of the Emperor ability, which can be used once a day to calm nearby enemies for 60 seconds. And should you choose to make your escape with Rayloth, the Stormcloak, and use this power on some of the Imperial foes you encounter in Helgen's dungeon, 
you'll be able to hear some otherwise locked dialogue that sort of hints on their thoughts on this matter, and specifically, the poor soldier who was, well, tossed. I saw Caius. That dragon just grabbed him and I don't know how I made it out of there. Better down here than out there. Hey, weren't you on the carts with the Stormcloaks? If you don't side with Rayloff or have the voice of the Emperor ability, you'll never get to hear this conversation. As if you side with Hadvar, you won't encounter any friendly Imperial soldiers with these lines. And if you don't have the voice of the Emperor ability, well, then you'll never be able to calm the hostile ones while you're with Rayloff. Likewise, if you choose to escape with Hadvar, the Imperial Captain, you can use the voice on some of the aggressive Stormcloaks you encounter but their dialogue won't be particularly unique in any way. Still though, this is a pretty interesting easter egg, or I guess maybe tidbit or fact would be more appropriate, that Bethesda left in the game for players who chose a very specific starting path. Anyway, with that we are going to wrap up. Five more things you probably didn't know you could do in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Part 12. Which of the ones that we went over today were your own personal favorites or did you find to be the most intriguing? What activities or side things to do do you know of that I've yet to explore in this series? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Thanks for stopping by everyone, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out everybody.